Oh. All right. Welcome. 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 All of you guys out there in the listening audience. Thank you for being here. We've got uh, a brand new episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Aren't you excited? You should freaking be. Episode number 1179. Yes, we're going to do the, uh, we've got all of the traditional stuff for you. we got the Duracoat finished firearm. We've got the Brownells bullet points. Going to talk about the new ammo buy price. It's the ammo stock price. Remember? We did we did this about five six years ago. I, I gave you guys the the my stock broker's advice. And I was like, I gave you the buy price. Well, there's a new buy price, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, student of the gun homeroom. We're going to talk about uh, well, we're going to talk about uh, being prepared for a home invasion. Are you prepared to be dangerous on demand? And this is a BFD. We've got Rick Lindsay, Rick J. Lindsay, and he is the CEO of x insurance for years you guys have they've sent us messages hey man you know what should i do I, I i conceal carry or i have a gun for home defense and you know all there's there's these different companies out there the nra company and the uscca and the law show company and you know which which one should i go with and quite frankly i've, I've always been kind of like Ugh, i don't know I, I never had a, a, a super warm fuzzy about any of them. You know, it's kind of one of those deals like, well, they're, it's probably better than nothing. You know, probably better to get that than to have nothing. Uh, another one, and we didn't even get into this, you know, but we can get into it in the future, is I am a fire. I want to be a firearms instructor, Right. How do I get insurance? And I actually, Jared, you don't know this, but years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago, I polled my peer group and I asked them what insurance they had. And to a man, it was all different. It was all different. Uh, some people like, it, it just, it goes in my basic business insurance. Other guys are like, it's I, I do it part time, so it's a rider on my home po- homeowner's policy insurance. Uh, others were like, I had one guy's like, there is no such thing as firearms instructor insurance. You can't get it, so you just have to hope for the best, you know. Uh, and he said, you know, Rick, we we asked him about liability or waivers. You know, is a waiver worth anything? Some people, some lawyers will tell you the waiver's not worth the paper that you that you wrote it on. It's worth For the less answer than, to this question. Yeah, tune in to the episode or exactly. the interview that's going to be later in the show. Then you'll so know. The, the, all these things you, they've been out there, and I I have not had the source up to this point to give people what I felt was a good answer. Right and. So that's why I'm really excited about today, and I think you guys are going to enjoy the show. And a lot of you out there, you probably have the exact same questions that we have. So uh, you need to tune in. But uh, with that, and we got all the no- normal stuff, aren't you glad you're here? You should be. Zach, hit it. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pin Pan of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right! Yes, indeed, yes, indeed, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. So, uh, it's time to get on it. Uh, Jared, do you have a review of the week you wanted to drop in there while I'm talking about the uh, boo boo class and the books? Uh, yes. Okay. I will jump over there and do that right meow. All right. In the meantime, we talked about it last week, and I'm going to talk about it again uh, today. We do have room. We still have some room in this coming this coming weekend's class. Uh, it's called Beyond the Boo Boo, and if you go to www dot beyond you got to know how to spell beyond the boo boo. <laughs> I typed Bob Bob uh, dot com. If you go there, you will see that uh, in a little town called uh, it's not a tiny town, but it's a small town called Vernal, Utah. 
Uh, we're going to be uh, hosted at the Warriors Warehouse. It's a fitness center. This is actually where I get my strength on here. I've been uh, getting my strength on here lately. Uh, we've got some seats, and if you use the promo code, what was it, 1178, you get a discount. Or if you use the promo code JackFM, you get a discount. Uh, yeah, this this one will be just promo code 1179. There you go, 1179, promo code 1179. Uh, but we would like to see – some of you out there have signed up, uh, and that's fantastic, so get on it. Uh, we like to do a congratulations. I have a proof copy because I am a an influential member of the media. Am I not? Yes, I am an influential member of the media, whether you believe that or not. Uh, I got a proof copy of the book, A Pipe Hitter's Guide to Access Denial. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because congratulations, congratulations uh, to our good friend Nicholas Orr. Uh, this last week, the, this book was rated as the number one new release in the Amazon Civics category. That's right in the Amazon civics category. And you say, well, what the heck is somebody I saw, uh, there was a post we put it, we shared it. Of course, we always share Nick stuff on our, our socialist media and what have you. And someone in the comments wrote, what does, what does access denial mean? And me not wanting to be a jerk did not answer. <laughs> I am like, well, there's a language, it's called English. And if you take those words, access, what does it mean to access? It means to get in, to have access to, to have, a, and then denial means you can't do it. The answer's no. <laughs> so access denial means you shall not pass. <gasps> what? That's cray cray. So in this book, there are numerous photographs and diagrams uh, and descriptions about how to keep people out of your neighborhood. Jeff Kirkham, a lot of you guys know Jeff Kirkham. If you don't know Jeff Kirkham, you're wrong. Wrote chapter three called The Home Fortress about how to fortify and secure your home. Uh, there's an entire chapter dedicated to that. And then uh, Nick, or the last chapter, and this is something that, this is one of those hard in your face dealios: famine, hunger, desperation, and psychosis. How to deal? How to prepare your mind to deal with these potential problems in a, a civil breakdown in a societal breakdown? So, uh, congratulations to our buddy Nicholas Orr. Uh, he. Rated number one new release in the civics category this week. So that is that is a very cool thing. Now, before we go any farther, you guys are going to see this week, if you pay attention to our socialist media, if you're on our, our mailing list, you're going to see probably on Friday because Zach does a, uh, Zach, what do you call it? A Liberty Letter. Every Correct. Friday. And that the, every Friday, if you're not getting the Liberty Letter, you're really, you're shortchanging yourself because it is packed full of fantastic information every friday zach does it for you and we've got a uh, an excerpt it's an article form but it's an excerpt from this book right here it's called the patriot fire team operation guidebook and i'll tell you what i did i tease you with it before so i wrote in 2015 i wrote the original patriot fire team guide and then we followed up with the equipment guide I wrote the manual first, and then a few years went by, and I wrote the equipment guide, and then another year or so went by, and I wrote the uh, um, mission planner, which is all about in your brain, right? Well, I decided to take all of those books, edit them, condense them. They're not super condensed, but the, uh, the manual is condensed, and put them all into one single volume. So if you'd like... You can get all three now if you don't have them yet or if you want to give this as a gift to friends or like-minded individuals. Liberty, if you've got liberty-minded individuals in your life, uh, what you can do for them now is say, hey, go buy the Patriot Fire Team 
Operation Guidebook. It's got all this. This is it, man. This is the how. This is the why. This is the how. This is the what. This is the where. This is the when. Right there in that book. And it, it's, it just became live, literally, like right before we turn the microphone on. So it's brand new. It's brand new. All right. So we've got a review of the week, and Jared is going to give us the review of the week. It's from Charleston Dad 843 on iTunes. And the title is Professor Paul for Director of the ATF. He says, Professor Paul for ATF director, or is it AFT? Anyways, I've been a student for around seven years and will be one as long as the Markle family keeps teaching. So thank you, Charleston Dad 843. We appreciate it. And if you guys have that are listening right now have not left a review, then go do that on your platform of choice. Um, iTunes, there's a bunch of reviews on there that you can read and write your own as well. Um can they leave reviews on Spotify? I know iTunes you can. Uh, I think so. Because we're on we're on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and every other podcatcher in the world. Uh, so all of them. Yeah, we're on all of them. Yeah. And if you want to get directly to our show on any of those, you go to studentofthegun dot com slash insert name here. So studentofthegun dot com slash iTunes gets you to the iTunes page studentofthegun.com slash Spotify gets you to the Spotify page, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's right. That's right. There's basically, uh, well, you're here and you have no excuse not to be here. So uh, we're even on SoundCloud and Stitcher. Yeah. All right, let's move on. It's time for a Duracoat finished firearm of the week. All right. Yes, indeed. Do you guys like metal? Are you metal heads? Do we have any metal heads out there? Uh, I know we have some. Most of them are have have gray in their beard, like me. <laughs> but all you metal heads, I wanted to remind you that there's this thing called Dura Metal. Dura Metal is an actual. Well, it has actual pulverized metal in it yes so when you apply it when you apply the dura metal finish to whatever it is do whatever you want i don't care your, your gun your knife your mailbox you know <laughs> your your spare car tire whatever uh it will look and appear as though there's metal flake in the finish because there is it's actual pulverized metal uh they had a lot of fun with this uh, they, they came up with fun names like Alice Copper, Bronzy Osborne, Golden Maiden, Gray Sabbath, <laughs> Guns and Rose Gold, Marilyn Bronzen, Twisted Silver, and Van Golden. And they've got examples of all of those uh, on their website. Uh, if you want to do something that is really cool and unique, you know who's not doing this, Jared? Those Ooh. those other guys. That's funny. The ones we don't talk about. Yep. So the if you want to stand out, if you want your project to stand out, this is one way that you can get it to stand out. Uh, it is the Dura Metal, the Dura Metal, uh, heavy metal collection, uh, and that is from. And you can get it as the uh, in the standard four ounce. Do it yourself. So if you, or you can get it in a uh, Canon Can technology. So even if you don't have a shop with a compressor and airbrushes and all that stuff, if you're just a dude who has a garage, you can still do it. You can still do it. So uh, check those guys out. They're good people. It's a family owned business and uh, it's super easy. You go to DuracoatFinishedFirearms.com. And tell them that Student of the Gun sent you. And for all of you guys up there in Wisconsin listening in the shop, what's up? Rock on. Yeah, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. High Point Firearms does stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess, you know, we, we, 
they didn't have the 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 yeet cannon available at uh, at shot, and that's okay because shot's not really a uh, it's not really a trade and uh, uh, it's a trade show. It's not a public show. But the next show that's coming up is the NRA annual meetings and convention, and it is in April, mid April, in Indianapolis, Indiana. And yes, Student of the Gun is planning to be there. And yes, we have a lot of really good stuff planned in the future. That was your notification that we have a lot of good stuff uh, planned in the future. So if you are within driving distance of Indianapolis, I would suggest that you open your calendar and uh, make plans to be there. That you're not going to want to miss it. So if you, it was funny. <laughs> I put in NRA 20, 2003, 23, 2023, and it came up with the National Restaurant Show. So if you'd like to, yep. to go to the National Restaurant Association's annual meeting, maybe we should do that. We should. I like food. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I like food. Do you like food? I like food. Uh, we could, <laughs> but if you go to NRA AM, that's NRA annual meeting. If you go to NRA AM, uh, it will tell you exactly when uh, you need to go and you need to be there. Indianapolis, Indiana registration is open now. Uh, it's obviously open to all NRA members and. It is April 14th to the 16th, so it's coming fast. It's coming fast. Holy crap balls. That's only five weeks away. Did you guys realize that? That it's only five weeks away? Yeah. Wow. I did, yes. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we've got, uh, yeah, we, we, we're we going to be there. There's going to be, you pay attention because there's going to be so much good stuff there. And uh, I don't know if High Point is going to be able to release the Eat Cannon at NRA. We will see. We will see. All right. How many of you guys out there have gone over to juxxijuxi.com and subscribed to the Student of the Gun channel? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you that haven't, why haven't you? It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, so when eventually... The, the socialists and fascists and communists uh, in California decide to pull the rug out from under us with YouTube or Facebook or whatever, uh, and they will eventually. They'll get around to it. Well, here's who they can't pull the rug out from under. They cannot pull the rug out from under Juxi because they don't have any control over it. So they can just suck it. How's that sound? Uh, J-U-X-X-I, Juxi.com. Get your butt over there. The latest video is the Battle Box Mission Briefing number 95. We did a Battle Box unopening. If you want to see what I look like in a mummy sleeping bag, um, you can do that. I have a confession to make. I'm not really a mummy bag kind of guy. I'm Why kinda, is that? Well, that one right there. Like when you zip it up, it's like being compressed like a sausage. And you're oh, like, yeah. yeah, that's what you're supposed to. That's how you stay warm. Not this guy. <laughs> I do not like being, I get, I get the claustrophobia thing going like almost immediately. I do not like the idea of being wrapped up like a sausage link. Now, I suppose if it was that or freezing to death, okay, I would do that, but, uh, yeah, maybe I'm just old school or whatever, but uh, yeah, but there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff in, in that if you you want to know what's going on with the battle box and so forth. Oh, speaking of videos, all of you guys out there, uh, Zachary put together a uh, a video short of me out in the out in the snow. Uh, <clears throat> that's one thing you guys are getting this year is lots of snow footage from Paul. Lots of footage of Paul out in the snow. Uh, if you got onto our various socialist media platforms and viewed and shared the uh, the FNFAL, the R1 
uh, in the snow video. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you haven't yet, well, check it out. It's, it's a, a fun little video. And thanks to Zach for putting that together. All right. Time for me to shut up. And for all of you new listeners to open up your ears and close that hole under your nose. Listen louder. Attention new listeners, we produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right. Yes, indeed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to our Brownells bullet points. But before we do that, I'm going to remind you, what was it was, geez, it was in the glass case of emotion studios in Biloxi where I was, when I came up with the, the ammo, the training ammo stock price. And, and we said, look, if you find it at this price, this is the buy price because it's probably not going to get any better than that. This is the buy price. And so, well, it's five or six years later now, and it's time for us to revise the buy price. And we're going to do that during today's Brown Hills bullet points. So pay attention, hippies. <laughs> Boom, bing, bang, boom, bada, bada, boom. What we've got for you guys today is we're going to talk ammo. We're going to talk ammo. Now, we generally, we have to, we had to limit it to a certain, you know, a few calibers. I can't do every caliber. And we're like, well, what about 380? And what about, you know, this? What about that? This is what I'm going to tell you guys. The, and, and you can base this, there's, there's two types of ammunition in the United States that ammo makers that they make the most of. When it comes to handguns, it's 9mm, 9x19, 9mm NATO, 9mm Parabellum, 9mm Luger, whatever you want to call it. That is the that is the handgun round that is manufactured the most by every manufacturer. And when it comes to rifle, 223556, right? So Back in the uh, in the in the good old days, back in the good old days, uh, we told you that if you could find nine millimeter training ammo, not the depleted uranium, you know, jacketed hollow point stuff like that, but just full metal jacket training ammunition, the buy price was twenty cents a shot or less. If you could find it for twenty cents a shot or less, buy. For 5.56, 223, full metal jacket training ammo, the buy price was 30 cents. All right. Well, that was about six years ago. That was before COVID. That was before we installed a, uh, a criminal dementia patient and a shadow government uh, into Washington, D.C., into the White House. That was before we had inflation go through the roof. So then that was before. They decided to pick a fight with Russia. There's a lot of things. So, and, and also the, the, Jared, the petrodollar was still strong in 2018, 2017, 2016. Uh, all those things are going bye-bye. All those things have changed. So here we are today, and this is what I'm going to tell you. And I'm watching. I've been watching the market. I get at least six, maybe eight emails a day from all the companies, right? From Brownells, from all the other ones, fill in the blank. And I watched the prices. 25 cents a shot for nine mil is the new stock buy price. If you can find it for that, buy. Now, you guys all know, or you should, or most of you probably are familiar with stocks, but you're like, well, the buy price is, you know, a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars or whatever. What if it's uh, if the buy price is a dollar, but I can find it for a dollar and four cents? Should I do it? I don't know. Should you? You say, well, if you say the buy price is twenty five, 
and I found it for 26.9. Should I buy? I don't know. Should you? Maybe. Uh, is it is it going to cost you more in time to find it somewhere else for mm-hmm. the 25 cents? The answer is yes. Yeah. It will. So just buy it. Well, also, if you pay close attention, uh, like for, for instance, right now, if you went to brownells.com, uh, the Salir and Below S and B, and that's high quality ammo. I've used S and B ammo for years and years and years. Never had a problem with it. They've got nine millimeter full metal jacket, one hundred fifteen grain, for twenty eight uh, ninety nine tw- or two hundred eighty nine ninety nine for a thousand. Right. So, what does that tell you? But if you use the promo code ammo twenty you get $20 off orders. So you get $20 off the order of $250 or more. So $289 minus $20, $269. So that drops the price to basically $0.27 cents a shot. There you go. So now it's $0.27 cents a shot, not 25 Is it worth buying? I don't know. You tell me. It's your life. It's your world. I'm just living in it. Uh, every once in a while, like Brownells will do promo codes for free shipping, you know, all orders, $200 and more free shipping, stuff like that. You just got to pay attention. Uh, the various other companies, sometimes they'll do that, you know, free shipping on orders, 250 or more, whatever. So if you find it and it's 26 or 27 or 28 cents a shot, but it's free shipping. Well, cause you got, I mean, shipping on ammo is not free. Right. Ammo is probably when it comes to shipping, I've done this. I've found cans, you know, am- cans of ammo and you know, it was X and I, oh, that's not a great price, but it said free shipping. I'm like, Oh, okay. So that's going to save me $24. So there you go. Uh, five, five, six, two, two, three, full metal jacket training ammo. The stock buy price is 35 cents a shot. If you can find it for 35 cents, and I should caveat this, I'm talking about full metal jacket, brass cased ammunition, not steel, brass cased. And so this S&B ammo from Brownells is brass cased, full metal jacket, new manufacturer ammunition. Uh, if if you think that you're like, well, I'm going to wait until you know next year, or I'm going to wait till this, or I'm going to wait till spring, or I'm going to wait till summer. You can, you can do whatever you want. You're an American, but I'm telling you, uh, right now it's March. It's still the mud season. If we you look over, look at Europe, if, and when Russia does a spring assault, they do a spring offensive ammunition and powder in Europe is not going to come to the United States. Ammunition and powder from Australia, Canada, and so it's not going to come here. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm talking about reality. Reality is, and and all I don't, Jared. Have you seen anything different? Russia changes mind. They're going to they're going to leave. That like we don't want to do that anymore. Forget it. Yeah, he just decided that he didn't want to do it anymore. So. Um, and if you look at the history of Russian wars, they're known for just throwing bodies, throwing soldiers at the problem until either they run out or they win. Or they win, yeah. Uh, and they're just getting started. They're just getting started. And, of course, NATO, rather than try and every, you know, Trump said, I'll go and negotiate. And they're like, shut up, Trump. Get out of here. We don't want to hear from you. So the people who are supposed to be the good guys, have you noticed that they've made no overture whatsoever towards negotiation? They're like, we're not going to negotiate with anybody because we've decided. I'm like, whoa, whoa. That's, uh, I thought we were supposed to be the good guys. I thought we were supposed to be the reasonable, rational, rational people. No. Okay. Ammunition's got to be made somewhere. Powder goes, you know, we can only make so much powder on planet Earth, and it's going to go to certain, you know, some places. 
And the powder that goes into the ammunition is going to be going to Europe. It's going to be going toward NATO. It's going to be you know, so, and we're not going to get, and we're not all that cheap Russian ammo that you were so excited to buy uh, 20 years ago. You're like, dude, I got 762 for 18 cents a shot. Yeah, that's gone. That's bye bye. Was it really bye-bye. that inexpensive? Yes. Yeah, back wow. in the in the early two thousand, mid that to was, late two thousands, you could it was like fire sale price. That was, I was you could too get, young to care at that point. In you time. could get on those ham cans that you needed a can opener for one hundred ninety nine bucks. Seriously? Yep. Wow. A whole can of seven six two by thirty nine for one hundred ninety nine bucks. That's gone. It's gone. Uh, so the buy price for nine mil, twenty five cents a shot. Maybe this, after this war, there will be another dump on the market. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, just you just gotta have to hang out and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't even want to bring up if a nuclear weapon detonates on planet Earth. I don't mean in New York. I mean anywhere on planet Earth. If a, if a nuclear weapon goes off anywhere on planet Earth. It will be, according to CNN, it'll be the Holocaust, or not the Holocaust, it'll be the apocalypse. It'll be the end of the world as you know it. And panic buying, you you think you've seen panic buying? Let a, yeah. let a tactical nuke go off anywhere on the planet and wait to see what happens with panic buying. So I love you guys. You guys in my audience, you're my bros. You're part of the in crowd. I'm telling you. Go to your ammo locker. Look at it. Do you have enough training ammo to get you through this year? Yes or no? Yeah, you can only you can answer that question for yourself. If you're like, dude, I've been listening to you for years. I got ammo enough ammo that my grandkids are going to have it. Awesome, awesome. If you don't, you might want to bump it up. You might want to bump it up. All right, so, all right, now it's time for me to shh and be quiet and for Zach to talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want education enlightenment and entertainment and we're open 24 7 check out shop sotg.com today and see for yourself yes that is what you should do you should check out shop sotg.com and zach has something to say Yes, indeed. Short and sweet today. If you go to shopsotg.com, you will find that the Armed Living DVD is currently on sale. Uh, get it? Get a nice little discount on that. If you already have it, tell a friend. That's right. Shopsotg.com. Uh, Armed Living DVD is on sale. Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you very much, Zach. Oh, uh, and uh, Zach has actually he has bumped up some of the store products. There are more products on the store now than there uh, have been ever before. So if you have not been to shopsotg.com lately, then get your butt over there and look and check out. We've got a lot of digital products. We've got a lot of on-demand products. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of unique stuff that you might not have even re- realized we had. So, all right, now let's sit time. Well, it is time for us to go to the Student of the Gun Homeroom, brought to you by our good friends at crossbreedholsters.com. All right. So I saw this blurb. I saw it on, I don't know, it was either an Instagram post or something. And how many times have you guys done this? You're you're flipping through your phone and you see something and you're like, oh, I, I might be interested in that. And then it goes away and you try and go back and, it, and your feed is refreshed and it's gone. And you're like, oh. So then you have to do what, what like peasants do. You have to go into your search engine and type in the words so i saw this and it said dad with machete right 
and then my feed refreshed and it was gone. So I went to search engine and I put in machete, like machete defense or, you know, uses machete or whatever. Don't do that. If you go into your search engine and you put in like machete attack or uses machete, you're going to get a lot. Uh, but this one specifically, this is a this is a dangerous on demand one here. This is a dangerous on demand one, and the you know there were there were several links, but this one just happened on February twenty eighth, so last week. Uh, and the source is the Kansas City Star. Yeah, that's right, Jared. What are the deets? It's from Monday tomorrow. Oh no, that's today's date. It's February twenty eighth, twenty twenty three. They almost got me. Mm. Dad with machete protects family after man breaks into kids' room. Oklahoma cops say. This is Dateline somewhere in Oklahoma. It doesn't give me a specific location, but it says a family sleeping in the middle of the night was awoken when a man trying to hide from police picked their house to break into. Authorities in Oklahoma said the man broke out a window of a child's bedroom, then forced his way into the room, according to a news release from the Tulsa Police Department. So Tulsa. Yep. Officers with the department were called to the home about 2 a.m., Tuesday, February 28th. Meanwhile, police said that the homeowner was trying to get his kids and wife to safety. The father got his family out of the home, but the man began throwing items and destroying the home, according to the release. At one point, the homeowner grabbed a machete and struck the man with it, police said, leading to the man leading the man to barricade himself in a bedroom. Officers arrived to find children screaming in the home's front yard. Family members pointed the officers to the home where the dad and suspect were inside. Authorities got the man out of the bedroom with the help of a police dog. I bet that was fun. Yeah. The man was the man was then taken to the hospital with cuts and injuries from a machete strike and broken glass. The man admitted he chose a random house to hide in after running from police. He also said he was smoking methamphetamine prior to the incident. The man was booked into jail on an FBI hold because of his Native American status, police said. Mm, there you go. So he's attacked by a machete-wielding dad. It was a, it was a meth-smoking Indian broke into a home in Tulsa. So, uh, yeah, it's like, we're sending in the dog. <laughs> So back in the old days, back when I was a popo, and I forgot about this until just now. So, uh, we when, one of the departments I was on, we did not have a canine unit, but if we if we as patrolmen made a stop and we thought there was drugs involved, right, drugs in the car, or drugs dealing, or whatever, the code we were we we would say uh, we would get on the radio and say, send the canine, right? Well, there wasn't a canine, but that was the code that the chief... So you, you know that back in the old days, all like this, the average citizen could, ha could get, go to Radio Shack and get a scanner. And there were a lot of people that had police scanners on their kitchen counters, you know, all, all of the volunteer firemen did, all the volunteer paramedics did, and a lot of just people who were kind of nosy and want to know what's going on had scanners so you had to watch what you said on the radio because it wasn't just you and the other cops listening it was like john q citizen so we would come up with these code things that and uh so uh i i had a stop and i and i, I knew the dude was was dealing drugs and and i was so i i picked up the thing and i, I said um tell the chief send the canine and i and and so she's like uh, okay. All right. So the dispatcher's like, did it. So he knew that I was on a drug stop. Right. And, uh, I ended up busting the guy, uh, with some, some dope. He would, cause I knew what he was doing. He was going from one house to another selling. Anyway, long story short, we didn't have a, a canine. And, and after it was over with, um, the dispatcher, she's like, she said, you know, whatever the code was to like phone call. It's so like phone call. She goes, when did you guys get a canine unit? Like, oh, we don't have one, but that's a code to let the chief know that it, that I'm doing a drug stop. And he's like, she's like, oh, okay. Well, there was another department I was on, and we had a guy on the department that could could that could do the a dog bark, 
right? How many of you guys have ever known friends, had friends that could do the, right? The, the fake dog bark. So <laughs> there was a guy and it was a similar situation, like in a bedroom or a closet or something. And, and he's like, F you, I'm not coming out. F you cops, whatever. And they're like, all right, this last chance we're sending in the dog. And he's like, F you. And so one of the dudes in the stack walks up to the door and goes, Arr! like, like a dying guy comes bolting out of the closet. And he's like, all right, <laughs> there was no dog. <laughs> they put cuffs on That's him. That's funny. They cuffed him and they're walking him out the hallway and he's looking for the dog <laughs> and he can't find it. He's like, can you tell? Cause he's like, he's like looking, looking, looking. Cause he's looking for the dog and there, there wasn't a dog. But I, and, and now, man, that's been twenty years. But I can't remember who that dude was. But he he could. It worked. Yeah, he sounded like like a like a vicious like a like a shepherd or something. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but then there's you know there are real dogs and and uh, I, I've been there. Doug, you know, Doug was uh, when when you're like we're sending in the dog, like f you, and like what and. Something that uh, if you're a potential uh, meth head, if you're a potential meth smoking Native American uh, and <laughs> you want to know how to keep yourself safe, uh, when they say they're sending in the dog and they don't kick the dog. This is like, this is like if you've ever watched the TV show Cops <laughs> and they send the dog in, they're like, they're like he's going to kick the Don't kick the dog. And they always do. They're hiding underneath like a, a kiddie pool or in a closet or in a crawl space or whatever. And they're like, we're sending in the dog like, F you. Nah, nah. And they send in the dog and the bad guy kicks the dog in the face. And the dog says, oh, yeah, why would you? Is that what we're doing today? <laughs> is this what we're doing today? Because canines, when you kick a canine, you just said to the canine, you know, in, in a, in a hum, like, human dog right. interaction, please chew my leg from my foot to my thigh. That's what I want you to do. And that's what it's going to do. As soon as you kick it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to latch on and it's going to use your leg as a, as a chew toy. So, But this, uh, what's interesting here, though, is people say, well, I live in a good neighborhood. Okay. Awesome. Glad you live in a good neighborhood. This guy was not actually a burglar. He was running from the cops. And we've seen this on multiple time, multiple occasions. Somebody's running from the cops, and they decide they're going to hide in your house or your garage or your workshop or your whatever. Are you prepared to be dangerous on demand? Yes or no? I like to think this is a cold steel machete. I, <laughs> no, if it was, that dude probably wouldn't be. Yeah, it probably anymore. was, and it was probably like a generic crappy one. Because if this dude, yeah, it must have been a really dull one. If this would dude have been wielding a cold steel uh, gladius machete, homeboy would have. Mm, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I thought you guys would find this interesting, though, that the dad dad used a machete. Zach, I knew you, I knew Zach would appreciate that. They didn't say whether the homeowner's name was Danny Trejo or not. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be pretty good. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> if you break into Danny Trejo's house, you're going to get cut. He's going to cut off your arm with the machete. At the Just machete. Expect to have a machete wielded. A machete, yeah. Uh and the sad thing this makes me sad. You guys, if, if you don't know, Cold Steel was purchased by uh, AGM companies, or AGM, and they did what, what, they, what companies always do when they buy another company. They go through their, you know, the, the, their SKUs, and they're like, okay, what are we not selling um, 10,000 of, or, you know? And all the specialty stuff, because Lynn Thompson, the, the, the great thing about Cold Steel when Lynn Thompson owned it was if he was interested in something, it's like, you know what? I can't find uh, whatever. 
I can't find a Gladius machete or a Gladius sword. And he says, well, I own a company. I'm just going to make them, and let's see if it, people want to buy them. Well, we've been recommending the the Cold Steel Gladius machetes for what? How long now, Jared? Since since Biloxi. Since they came out. Yeah, yeah, since they came out. Since we were made aware of them, at least. Yeah. And they're they're an insane value because they're made out of real good steel. The last time I tried to find one to buy, uh, everywhere I went, they it said sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. So I do not know what the future of the Gladius Machete is. Uh, I don't know whether they just sold out because they didn't have, you know, they didn't have any more, or if they discontinued them. But uh, for those of you smart guys who listened to us and bought them, good job. That this is one of those deals where you know you should listen, and. Uh, <clears throat> I just went to Cold Steel's website and tried to uh, put one of their uh, Tonto, or not not Tonto, the um, Katana machetes in my cart, and it said, 404 error, page no longer found. I can get a Cold Steel tactical machete from Amazon. They're in stock. Ah, there you go. Is it, a, is it the Gladius one? Yeah. Oh, cool! It, you know how Amazon the title the product titles are all SEO'd. Yeah, so it's Cold Steel All Purpose Tactical Machete with Sheath, great for clearing brush, survival, camping, and outdoor activities. Gladius Machete, one size. There you go. There you go. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what the future of those machetes are. If you can get your hands on one, uh, I would get it. I would get it. Uh, they're 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 made in actually South Africa. You guys remember that? The the cold steel machetes were made in South Africa, not Taiwan uh, or, or China or whatever. So, All right, moving on. It is time, and uh, we, we tease you with this, and we're teasing you no longer. We're got, we have Mr. Rick Lindsay. He's the CEO of X Insurance. We've got him on the line, and we're going to bring him on. And he's going to talk all about insurance and you guys, whether it's homeowners insurance, ATV insurance, gun insurance, firearms insurance, whatever. Uh, nobody wants to have insurance, but if you, but you need it. And when you need it, you want a good company that's going to stand behind you, not a company that's going to, as soon as you make a claim, cut you loose. Oh, you want it to use your insurance? Well, bye. So uh, pay attention and listen up. All right, as promised, we have Rick J. Lindsay, the CEO of X Insurance. Uh, here we've got him on the line with us, and uh, we've been teasing you guys with a little a little bit uh, about this for the last few days. Put some posts out on the socialist media to let you guys know. Uh, just a quick setup. For years, we have been asked by people, our audience, our fans, our, uh, when I guess it started when NRA's Carry Guard came out. And people started sending us letters. Hey, man, what do you recommend? What do you recommend? And it's been a difficult question for me because, quite frankly, a lot of these, you know, these uh, group-based policies, and, and we, we all know what happened to NRA's carry guard. They got sued out of existence, so the guys who were using them, they were screwed. And so everybody's been a little bit shy about what they should do or what they should get in on. So I thought, let's just go straight to the source. Uh, I've known, we know, we're friends with Mark uh, at AAR. Uh, I'm buddies with Mark, and I've known him for a long, long time. And uh, he's actually the one who told me about X Insurance a couple of years ago. And then we did the research, and we're like, hey, those guys are in Salt Lake City. They're our homeboys. Uh, so, Rick, thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate you taking your time. Uh, pleasure to be here. And and, and you, you flew away from the, the, the western snow apocalypse and, and you're in flow rider right now yep. yeah i went to georgia and hunted some quail and then came down here but nobody wanted to go hunt quail with me so i 
I, <laughs> I would have gone with you to hunt quail, but, <laughs> but to, let Jared, do you want to start off with questions or, or, or Rick, I, I guess the, well, let's, the, all, let's go down the list of topics first. Okay. I'll go ahead and uh, we'll start with self-defense insurance and our listeners, a lot of them carry guns and even if they don't carry guns, maybe they carry knives or some sort of weapons. We recommend the fundamental four. So lethal, sharp, bright, and medical. And so for those of the listeners that are carrying those things every day, is there something that X insurance can do to provide a policy that covers them? Yeah. I mean, basically I think the biggest um, drawback to firearms liability policies, whether it's USCCA, US law shield is, it it's very narrow and only covers firearms, right? So if you stab somebody, they're not going to cover you. If you don't shoot your firearm, I've had to deny coverage because you didn't use it. So we provide personal liability insurance. And whether you're a security guard or a FBI agent or a school teacher, we cover you and you schedule, you know, if you don't have a firearm, then you don't tell us that. But if you're a martial artist, black belt, whatever, you know, we're covering you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year at work, at play, at home. So those of you that are listening and you're also walking weapons, you're covered as well. Uh, the ones on right. your leashes, on the leashes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing for uh, me. And then one thing that. Okay. Go ahead, Jared. No, you go ahead. Well, the biggest thing for me that uh, that a lot of people are shy about these certain policies because they're not. Rick, tell me, oh, like all right, NRA carry guard, they're gone, but U.S. Law Shields, U.S.C.C. are are they actual insurance companies, or are they a group, kind of like a, a I don't even know what to put it, a a, a mass. It's a, it's called it's called a master group policy so okay master group policy. US, yeah uscca had an a-rated carrier a while ago um you know that a-rated carrier canceled them and so they have a new carrier that's not rated and so they issue a policy to the organization and then you are added as an additional insured member okay. and um you know, again, I've, I've done those policies. That's how I started back in the 80s, insuring helicopter ski guides and other um, recreational activities at the time that were thought to be uninsurable because it was on the government land and people, you know, had a, uh, had a, a bad experience and the insurance companies paid. So, you know, it's, it's like uh, Bushmaster, right? It doesn't matter whether you're personal whether you're commercial, whether you're a manufacturer, lawyers are doing their job by attacking, right? They're supposed to, um, you know, do the best they can for their client. Well, insurance companies have grown into this deal over many years and including U.S. Law Shield where, um, you know, U.S. Law Shield only defends you, doesn't indemnify you. So, you know, unfortunately, and, you may know, I, you know, people may know, I got arrested in Chicago and accused of assault uh, on an officer and charged with a felony, which means I can't own a, uh, an insurance company. So um, when they charge you with the felony, they're, you know, doing that to be able to let you out and you plead guilty to a misdemeanor. I refuse to do that, right? That's what your insurance company should do is protect you not talk you into settling because it's cheaper so you know, i've been winning lawsuits for 40 years that lawyers tell me i can't win starting with the sains versus whitewater voyages case in california where a guy fell out of the raft and drowned and every lawyer said release forms are no good and the truth is release forms are valuable if the facts are in your favor right if, if the facts are against you and you did something grossly negligent, a release form isn't going to protect you. But they are good when it's inherent to the activity. And, you know, I proved that in 1988 with the Sains versus Whitewater Voyages case. But it cost me more money to fight. I could have settled for less. And that is the whole setup 
that the lawyers have and the insurance companies are clueless that they don't get it, right? They're trying to save money, like U.S. Law Shield. I met with the guy, and he says, oh, you know, we have lawyers on retainer in every state. I'm like, well, how good of lawyers are they? Because, you know, when you're in trouble like I was, I don't want your crappy cheap lawyer that's, you know, not being paid. You know, again, I hired the best lawyers. I won. I sued the city of Chicago and they paid me $200,000 and everybody told me I was going to lose, including my own lawyers. Lawyers are tools, right? And we use them like they're the pilot of our plane, right? They get to fly it. They get to crash it. They, no, they sit in the back of the plane. Business owners and, you know, um, Bushmaster and Remington, they shouldn't have listened to the lawyers, right? They, they settled based on the idea that, oh, you'll save yourself. It's like having gangrene in your arm and, and somebody talking and cutting off your arm so you'll live and then you die anyway. That's, that's, that's dumb stuff. And I've been seeing that go on for 40 years because insurance companies take your money and they underwrite you hoping that you're the guy that's never going to have a claim. <laughs> so if you have a claim, now you're a, now you're a risk and they cancel you. It doesn't matter whether it's Florida homeowners or, you know, a security guard that gets sued for, you know, assault and battery. I mean, when I insure security guards, I underwrite them. I don't exclude assault and battery. That's probably the most important coverage they need. So, you know, again, I, I've been doing this for way too long. And, um, you know, I saw the opportunity, but I knew as an agent or broker that I needed to be the guy that owns the company. Then I could tell lawyers what to do. And I can, you know, work with my insurance. It's really all up to the insurance. I would have been telling Bushmaster, never, you, you don't settle this case ever. You're basically negotiating with a terrorist. Mm-hmm. And when you negotiate mm-hmm. with terrorists, you know what they do? They cut your head off. Anyway. Terrorists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and look what happened to that company. That company, got, uh, they folded and they broke it up and they sold it in a fire sale. And it, it basically gave the lawyers encouragement and pasture to where now we got to fight for that land back. And, you know, I've told many of the manufacturers, I'm like, you know, you guys sit around and wait to see what gun was used in the last shooting. And if it wasn't you, you don't worry about it. That's the wrong approach, right? We all need to be on the same approach. Doesn't matter who the manufacturer was. It's not their fault. It's the person. And so, you know, as a team, as an industry, now there's always bad people in the industry. I don't care whether it's helicopter skiing or rafting or you'll never get rid of the crappy operators, but you can separate yourself from them by having a plan or a play. It's like going to the Super Bowl and showing up with a little league team that talks you into settling some bullshit lawsuit. Don't, don't do that. Right. I, I explain it like the horse, right? The horse is, selling guns, making guns, selling insurance, uh, issuing policies. The real job is the back end of the horse where the comes out. And when you start talking to me, I like, look, dude, I don't even want to talk about the front end. Let's talk about the back end and how we're going to deal with the that can happen and does happen eventually. Be prepared, right? And my job is to be expert at managing claims. That's the only thing an insurance company should be expert at. And they all outsource it and they all try and avoid it. You know, they, they add exclusions. Like in California, everybody's home excludes mudslide. How would you feel? I don't know if you guys live in California or not, no. but you know, everybody's <laughs> been worried about wildfire. And now with the rains, they find out they're not covered for mudslide. If I take your money and I insure your home, I am covering you. Right now, I can't be cheaper than a guy who's not giving you flood or mudslide or the stuff you really need. And it's it's just fundamental. It's so common sense. It's ridiculous. I always say it's so simple. A caveman could do it. That's, that's kind of why I'm good at it. I'm basically a caveman. <laughs> and we're, we're glad that you're out there. I, I tell you what, it, it's a it it's the whole insurance thing. I think a lot of people, you know, we don't want to think about it. Right. Nobody wants to think about it, you know, because that's not the fun part. That's not the exciting part. That's the part. But it is important. 
And then again, we've got a lot of confusion. We've had, like I said, with the NR, we had a lot of people five, six, seven years ago who jumped into NRA carry guard. They bought memberships and so forth. And then, you know, they folded and they're like, well, should I go to the the story behind that? Right. I mean, basically you can't insure a crime, Mm -hmm. right? That's why I don't need to exclude assault battery and all this stupid stuff insurance companies put on there. What they're trying to do is get out of defending you by putting the exclusion on there. That's not their job, right? They do it a lot cheaper because you're really self-insured. So, you know, giving people what they actually need and, and, um, you know, knowing how to deal with it when it does come in. And if you insure 10,000 people, most of them aren't going to have a claim. But the one or two that do, pretty important. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> zach's monitoring very closely uh, no i i appreciate your your candor and and, and your, your forthrightness and i know that our audience appreciates that jared do you want to uh, go back to the question uh section oh yeah let me hop over there real quick we've got a couple questions um this one is, uh, moses i believe owns an insurance brokerage or something of the sort i'm not inside baseball and insurance. So I don't know how it works, but he says, okay, is it true insurance? What type of risk pooling is used? And he says other types of self-defense insurance aren't really insurance, at least, at least not in the legal sense, which I think we already covered that he says technically insurance is the contractual transfer of risk and is supposed to put you in as close to a pre-loss condition as possible after the loss has been settled. So the questions are, is it true yeah. insurance? Yeah, and no, what type of risk pooling is used? He's definitely in the insurance business. And when you say risk pooling, I don't know what he means. You know, that that's something that um, I have a proven track record over 40 years of pooling my 10,000 insureds and, you know, making money, right? Most insurance companies don't make money. So when trouble hits, they exit. Right. I've always insured what I call the land of the misfit toys. And yes, all I do is give them real insurance, which is number one, you in, you uh, defend them. Right. That's your first job. You have to defend them. And then your second job is to indemnify them for the amount of money they would be liable for. And USCCA does not do that. Or no, um, US Law Shield, they just provide the defense. They provide you no indemnity. So that's definitely not insurance. Um, USCCA, they say it's insurance and they say that, you know, they're issuing it um, with indemnity and defense. And, you know, I don't know whether they do that or not. I I haven't ever had, I haven't ever experienced a claim with them. You know, that's where I look at it. That's what you should look at is, okay, let's see some people that have actually had some claims. Like I can give you helicopter ski guides that had Frank Wells, the chairman of Disneyland, die with them. And I manage the claim. I can show you how it ended up. So, you know, that's, to me, what is lacking from these people, um, the other people offering it. And, you know, USCCA lost their A-rated carrier. Why? I don't know. They must have had some claims. Um, And now they're with a new unrated carrier. And, you know, the rating of an insurance company is very important. 13 homeowners companies in Florida went broke this year. And none of them are A-rated by AF Best. So, you know, if you bought from them, you kind of should have known that they weren't in good financial shape. So USCCA, you know, they say they have 600,000 members. If that's true, they got a lot of money because I think they get about $600 a member. And, um, you know, I'm familiar with them. I'm not um, an expert on them. So, you know, with a brand yeah. new company, they got a lot of mowing to do before they figure out whether they have a successful program or not. And I would tell you their risk pooling didn't work or the A-rated company they're with wouldn't have canceled them. Then Moses wants to know, yeah, well, that's... how can I promote X insurance in my office? Yeah, no, he just has to call me. Any any agent or broker in the country can call us and do business with us. We're what's called an open market. I don't appoint or bestow knighthood on certain people, which, again, is what the traditional insurance industry has done. They pick one guy in every state and force everybody to go through them. I didn't form my own insurance company 
to force everybody to go through one guy, right? This is open country. The best guys will float to the top and the dirt bags will sink to the bottom. There you go. Get on it, Uncle Moses. Make that call. Jared, you want to ask a question so, um, from Ryan? Yeah, I actually have a question for you. Oh, okay. It seems like you've done everything the opposite of what traditional insurance does. What drove you to make those decisions? In common sense, you know, when I insured the rafting companies and somebody would die in the boat from a heart attack, you would, you know, they're like, well, isn't that what I buy insurance for? I feel bad for the guy. And I'm like, no, that's called life insurance, right? He died in your boat from a heart attack. He could have died at home in his lazy boy a week ago. And guess what? You can pay that claim too, right? You, you, The, the lawyers will take a widest berth as you'll give them. So, you know, I wanted to fight frivolous lawsuits and nobody else did. And again, it's everything to me is opposite of what the experts think. And, you know, everybody in this business went to college and has resumes. I didn't go to college. If I sent my resume into AIG or one of the big companies, they'd trash it because I don't have the pedigree. And I think I got it right. And my record and history kind of shows that. I mean, AM Best used to treat me like a dirt bag. Now I'm like their poster child because <laughs> I do things the right way. No, that's fantastic. You're you're and you're exactly the person that our audience will appreciate. All right, Jared, you, yeah, you want to add, got one more question here right. from Ryan on Discord. He says, My biggest thing is appeals. Anything can happen that can cause you to be convicted. So do they appeal convictions? Okay, so again, insurance companies don't like to appeal anything. Why? Because it costs them more money, right? I think that's my job. I can show you many, many cases where we've lost on um, the primary case where a judge, one of them I just lost, the judge wouldn't let our expert testify. And he said, well, if I let your expert testify, that'll prejudice the jury because he's so good. I'm like, well, that's what an expert's supposed to do. They have their expert. <laughs> we Whoa. have our expert, you know, let them testify. So when judges and, you know, again, I say, you know what judges are? Lawyers with robes. Yeah. They're all on the same team. Yeah. They all want to settle everything. Right. So I'm not there to make the lawyers happy. And I've said to my own lawyers, you know, when I get into these big cases, you get down to the wire and they start wanting to settle. And I'm like, dude, what, what is your problem, right? This this is where we're at the one yard line and we're going for it. We're not settling. And they're like, well, you know, Rick, you're kind of a hard ass. You know, I have to work with these lawyers, right? I got a career beyond this case. And I'm like, yeah, well, if you grew some balls, they might respect you. Because right now they know <laughs> exactly how to get you to go where they want you to go. And I'm a suspicious guy. If you want me to go left or you're trying to lead me something, I, I'm going to be thinking, what, why are you wanting me to go there? There must be a benefit to you, not necessarily to me. But, you know, again, lawyers are way smarter than me. And so are actuaries. You know, when people talk about risk pools, all these guys hire an actuary, pay them 80 grand, and it takes them a year to formulate a program. And then they lose money and they cancel everybody and they go do something else. And actuaries tell me stuff. Lawyers tell me, stuff. I'm like, guy, if you're so smart, why don't you form an insurance company? And why don't you just go do it? Right. Cause <laughs> why are you telling me what to do? So I don't like actuaries. I don't like lawyers. I mean, I use actuaries to give me my numbers after the fact, but I do not need them to help me lose my money by telling me how to be stupid and compete with stupid. <laughs> Amen. If you're going to lose your own money, at least you're going to have fun doing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you make money, it's even funner. And, you know, again, winning, winning when other people tell you you can't is, I don't know, satisfying. It's, 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 it's fun. You know, when I was in high school, my football high school coach was my guidance counselor. and He didn't like me very much. I remember him looking me in the eye after I took the, you know, aptitude test or whatever bullshit they're selling you. He says, you should be a garbage man. <laughs> I said, I mean, if I would have been smarter at the time, I'd have said, well, there's some pretty rich garbage, man. 
but yeah. I don't think he meant <laughs> it in a good way. I insure a lot of trash trucks and, you know, garbage haulers and they're good people. You know, I got people in New Jersey. Nobody will insure them. They're the best insureds I ever had. We go to court and we fight. You know, they just had a really sad accident that was their fault. I'm going to, I'm going to do my best for them and we're going to keep insuring them. Other insurance companies don't do that. They, you know, once you have that big claim, and, you know, they're accusing the guy of running from the scene and stuff, which we have the video. He didn't. It, you know, it's a truck. He didn't even know he ran over the guy. And the guy was riding a pedal bike and rode it right under his trailer. Right. And I know our driver didn't want to run over a guy. Wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to go run over some guy today. You know, nobody wants to deal with this stuff. But when you have bad happens, it you know, you need a good team and you need people who aren't going to throw you under the bus and make it worse. They're supposed to help you through it and get you through it. No, I, one thing that I like about what you're doing is it sounds like you're the person that actually goes there and fights for your clients. Is that true? As much as I possibly can. I mean, I, I'm the only insurance company president that gets deposed all the time because I don't care. <laughs> I talk to people, you know, that exposes you if, if I didn't want to get deposed, I just wouldn't talk to my clients because if I don't talk to you, then you can't depose me. But, you know, when I show up and I, you know, stand up for people, it sends a message to, you know, if you don't show up, they know you don't give a shit. Right? you got to show up. And so, yeah, I, either me or one of my employees on staff lawyers is in every case. And, you know, the key thing is early reporting people don't report because they're afraid of their insurance. So, you know, little accident happens. They won't report it trying to keep a clean loss run. That kind of is another clue that, you don't, you know, you're with the wrong insurance company. It would be like hiring a lawyer on retainer and then never calling them. What, why would you do that? Right. If you're going to pay premiums, you should have a relationship where, you know, they're not going to throw you under the bus when what can happen actually does happen. They stick with you. They fight. They don't drop their weapons and run for the hills. Amen. Amen. Jared, do you have any more uh, any more questions for Rick? Um, I would like to talk about the true umbrella for a little bit if you've got some extra time. Sure. Yeah, I know the true umbrella is, again, most people selling umbrellas, I tell them and I tell the other insurance companies, I'm like, you sell umbrellas? Yeah like, well, you should quit false advertising because I think that's the next thing the lawyers are going to start suing you for because you're not issuing an umbrella. An umbrella used to come down and pick up your dog and your diving board and your trampoline. Now your primary policies exclude your dog. So when you buy an umbrella, it's not umbrella, it's excess. It's, it follows the primary policies and excludes everything they exclude. So I'm the only guy that actually offers an umbrella and it's not a pre-canned can of corn. We actually customize it to you. I didn't know what a haberdasher is, but that's like a fancy word for Taylor. Mm -hmm. So that's what I say. You know, we custom fit like we're like a haberdasher. We make sure you have what you want. You have to tell me you're a girl soccer coach. And then if one of the dads, you know, accuses you of being inappropriate with his daughter, that's what we cover you for. Now, if you're actually found guilty and I've defended you, then, you know, the policy kind of goes away. You cannot provide a criminal act coverage, mm -hmm. right? You, you can appeal, right? And I would, depending on the facts of the case, we would appeal. But if it's, you know, obvious that you did it, then, yeah, any insurance company can't provide it. And that's really what the NRA got in trouble for. Their broker and the NRA sold kill insurance and it was just for firearms so the state of washington and the state of new york went after them and lloyd's got fined seven and a half million dollars and their broker got fined seven and a half million now in new york and washington they say you can't issue firearm liability coverage right well i don't call it firearms liability coverage i either call it a true umbrella you can't tell me i can't cover somebody for defending themselves so a lot of this is terminology and, you know, again, insurance companies trying to be cute. I mean, buying just 
a firearms liability policy is so narrow, it's ridiculous, right? You, you buy homeowners and it should cover your firearms liability and an umbrella should. If your primary policy doesn't, the umbrella should come down and go to the, the bottom layer and pick you up from zero up to the umbrella limits. So X insurance is not just concealed carry insurance. I mean, you, you do that, you provide it for the people, but it's also your ATVs. It's also your karate instructor. It's also, you have a German shepherd. It's also, you know, yeah, it, it's trash a, trucks, trucks, long haul. We insure over 700 risk classes of business, which, you know, years ago, that's why AM best didn't like me because most insurance companies, um, are specialists, right? They do med mal only. And, you know, I've always been very open-minded about insuring people, not classes of business. And so, you know, again, AM Best would say, you need to be an expert. So I used to go in there on my annual meeting and I would have examples of, you know, companies that were A-rated that they thought were expert. And I was like, but they lose money. Right. So shouldn't they make money if they're expert at what they do? And, um, you know, again, they. They don't see that if you only do one thing and you guys start an insurance company and cut my price in half, what do I do now? I got to compete with stupid. So that's what I always say is, look, I don't compete with stupid. Right. And all the time people attack my 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 business. They think, oh, look, Rick's making money. Well, it's because I take a different approach. I take the right strategy. I insure classes of people. Good people, I'll insure. Bad people, no thanks. I, you know, I, I can't insure liars, cheaters, and stealers. You just can't do it. All right. That's uh I like that. Insuring people and not classes of business. That's great. Well, well, think, we've had you for about a half hour. You go ahead, Dad. Yeah. No, I, I really, I, I'm very. We were at the at the Crossbreed Holsters uh, Top Golf Party together, but we didn't get a chance to talk. Uh, and I'm glad that we have gotten a chance to talk. I'm glad that that Jared uh, and put it together. So, I'm I'm looking forward to now that we've we've talked because we've kind of danced around it a little bit, but. Uh, and like I said, I, I know Mark from from AAR, and he he introduced us to X Insurance a while ago. And and there's no reason that we all can't work together as as good friends because we're all at, we're all trying to achieve the same goal, and that's you know give good people a a solid program, something to lean on. You know, and I know most of our audience they're out there. They're like, I know I should have something, but I don't know what. And you know, I talked to my guy and he's like, oh, you have to sell your dog and you can't have a gun and you know, because blah blah blah. Or so I, I'm I'm personally very happy that we had this conversation and that we can give our audience, the people who are listening, some place to go. Uh, and I think X insurance is the place that they're going to go and they're going to want to go there. And I'll let Jared, you know, and, and you do the background stuff and when, when it comes to recommendations and all that, but, um, I appreciate you taking the time well, to be think, with us. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys listening and giving me the voice. I think it is important that people know they, they can do better. There, there is a, there's only one good insurance company out there. The name of the company is prime insurance company. It's A-rated. It's in all 50 states. X-Insurance is our brand that, you know, about five years ago, I just decided, look, I, I can keep talking to agents and brokers who are smarter than me and won't, won't you know, listen to me. They're like, you can't be better than AIG. And I'm like, well, I am. So, um, you know, it's something that uh, people need, good people need, um, and it is available. And, you know, I, it's available because I started my own company. Now, anybody else can copy it, right? It's not that hard. You just get a pile of money, form an insurance company, get A-rated in all 50 states, and you can go. But I do, you know, any agent can call us. So if you have a trusted agent or broker, have them call us. It doesn't matter to me whether you call me direct or you go through an agent. Um, I prefer to work with the agents because there's 50 states, you know, Farm Bureau in Iowa probably has a really good homeowner's policy. 
but it probably excludes firearms. So we would give you a true umbrella and we would fill the gaps in your primary policy. So we want to use the market to your advantage. We're not trying to be all things to everybody. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So if you guys Hearing want to find X insurance, you go to X insurance.com. Right. X insurance.com yep. and tell them the student of the gun sent you. And they'll say, who? <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll know. No, they'll they know. <laughs> if enough people do it, if enough people do it, they'll be like, oh, those guys. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, we'll let you go. Thank you very much, Rick. Enjoy the sun. We'll enjoy the snow. You know where I'm parked right now, Rick? I'm parked in Vernal. Vernal. So. We, oh, really? Yeah, we we get yeah. every time it snows in Heber, we we watch the clock, and twelve hours later, we get it. All right. I got. Well, I have a place out on the Duchesne for like thirty years. Oh, okay. So we should meet out there. We should, yeah. I got I got four and a half feet of snow in my front yard right now. I've had to shovel the roof three times yep. this year. <laughs> do, you have, uh, do you have snow insurance? Well, that'll keep. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll keep you in shape. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. All right, everybody. That is that is Rick from uh, X Insurance. We are glad that he uh, joined us, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right. That is it, man. That was fantastic. Uh, he, I don't know if he knows it or not, but Rick Lindsay of X Insurance is a student of the gun. Don't know if anyone's ever told him that he is one, but he obviously is one. Uh, he's our kind of people. He is uh, yeah, the the kind of people that we want to. Uh, and as we talked about, you guys, can, if you have a broker, you know, like I have an insurance guy, tell your insurance guy that you want X Insurance and be like, you really do? Yeah. Yeah. And if you are an insurance person, well, there you go. There you go. Call them and tell them that Student of the Gun sent you. That's right. Call them and tell them that Student of the Gun sent you. All right. Before I let you guys go, I want to let you know what's coming up uh, this week, uh, this Thursday on the Student of the Gun University podcast. It is a short form, single topic, easy to digest. And uh, we've been talking about marksmanship and the importance of training and so forth. Well, this week, I'm going to dive into unconscious competence. Yes, unconscious competence. And why is that an important thing? And why should you, why should that be something that you're trying to achieve? Yes, indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, thank you very much for being here. I truly appreciate your support. Remember, you're a beginner once. <laughs> Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. 